Chris, what were you most pleased with today? It's hard to put it in order, but I think the last month has got us sort of back on the right track. We feel like we're playing closer to our best footy, and it's not just one or two guys. I think um, some of our best players, Cameron and Hall and Dangerfield, spring to mind in the previous month, getting back to their best. But we think it's sort of improvement across the board, um, and against a really dangerous opposition who are well um, organised behind the ball especially it was um, it was you know I thought early in the game it was just some of our players were just dominant in a contest um, Hawkins was obviously kind of the highlight there but um, it's hard for those guys to play well if you don't get the ball to them the, the critics obviously came hard for guys like Dangerfield early in the season and Hawkins and <laughs> even the club as a whole to an extent he sort of looked at the past month sort of um, vindication in I mean you know, I'm, you know, is a vindictive person, but like, you know, the, the, <laughs> the faith that you had, you know, the unwavering public faith that you had in the players in the last four weeks, I think you won by an average of about 10 goals. I don't really know what you're talking about, honestly. I, I don't. I just don't, like, so you could explain it to me, and I'm, so I'm not challenging you. Yeah. I'm just trying to explain. I don't hear it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And because it just doesn't help me. Yeah. Um, so if the compliments are coming now that doesn't help me so I won't listen to it um, but I, I assume that if um, Premiership team this year loses the first three next year um, it'd be a story, I, I get it it's not, it's not a matter of arguing about anything that was said about us it's, it's more a product of us trying to get to the stage where we're really confident that we have the information internally and we can respond to that and that's always a balance of not getting too critical um, when things are going against you and dropping your bundle and allowing that negative momentum to grab a hold, but also being real about what the problems are. And I thought the thing that gave me confidence in that first month was that we felt we were across those things. Um, it's when you're really confused that it's hard and sometimes then you do think, well, maybe we don't have the answers internally so we need to listen to some of the stuff on the outside because they might be seeing something that we're not, but we just didn't think we were in that position. We were always confident Tom Hawkins could respond so quickly because he had such a limited pre-season, kicked three in the first three and he's really burst alive in the last three weeks. Did you think it was going to happen this quickly in terms of his output? No, it's, it's, I mean, it's hard to predict, but he was. we were just talking about it before. He, he was the most important um, person in, in that decision-making process and, and he was really confident that it was the right way to go. And the medical staff were confident that his specific injury was going to be OK. So when it became a match fitness thing, um, as long as he was confident that he could work his way through it, then, and, and especially given he's so structurally important to us, um, then it, it just, you know, we were, we were confident that even if he wasn't going as well now, I think we'd still be saying, OK, well, we made this decision to allow him to work his way into the season. And I can make a pretty strong case that in the last few weeks in particular that Cameron becomes a harder player for opposition teams because of what Hawkins does. It was a bit the reverse today. Uh, but yeah, in terms of him getting back to his best, I mean, at some point, he's 34. At some point, he's not going to be able to maintain this level. I don't think it's going to come quickly. Um, but logic has to take over at some point. He can't do it forever. Um, but I still, still marvel at you know, what, what he can deliver, he doesn't look like he's near to the end to me. He was a three-quarter time that he was level with his personal best and needed one more to eclipse it. No, I, I didn't... I, I was surprised to hear that he'd never kicked eight before and my takeaway from that is he's such an unselfish player, he gives goals away and we've... At least in my time at Geelong... Well, actually, he, he certainly wasn't the focal point in our forward line before my time, so his whole career... We've never set it up just around Hawk. Um, and in a way, he doesn't allow it because he brings other players into the game. And if he sees that others have a good matchup, he's happy to sort of sacrifice being the main target to help them. So, um, yeah, I love him. Is there any sense early on from him that he might be letting the team down or so on, playing while less than 100% fit? I didn't sense it. Um, 
And that's not what we thought either. We just thought we weren't playing that well. It's amazing when you're being beaten around the ball, you're not getting the ball forward that much, and all of a sudden it's the forwards' problems that we're not kicking goals. Like, sure, he wasn't at his best, but... Yeah. Again, I mean, it's hard for me to comment because I don't know exactly what was said, but we, what I can tell you is what we talked about. In the first three weeks, we weren't thinking... It's Hawkins. How do we get him into the game so we can win these ones? That that was. I mean, we had a long list of things that we needed to improve, but that was a fair way down the list. Same with training starting in the ruck again. Is that something long term you're now seeing as a potential option uh, while Reece Stanley remains on the sidelines? Yeah, we we like the flexibility that that gives us. Um, I'd like to think that Radigalia and Taconing are going to play together for a long period of time and both can play um, a little bit in the ruck, but I think their primary positions are going to be as key backs. Um, we're going to play Segler over the next um, few weeks, but we're really keen to make sure that we manage him through and use him appropriately, but he'll certainly play AFL footy for us. Um, and then hopefully we get Jack Henry back mid-year and, and then, then Stanley as well, roughly in that time frame. So. What we're trying to get to is a position where we have options and if we lose one or two, it doesn't completely cripple us in terms of our structure. So, at the very least, Sam showing that he can hold down that position uh, is good for our flexibility in the future. Obviously, he's still quite a young player. I know he's put on a lot of size in his time in the AFL system, but is there a concern about him being a young ruck against these really big, strong men in the competition? Yeah, I, I think there are very few really young ruckmen who have come in and dominated the competition. But, Certainly not for a long period of time, just because it's, I mean, it's, it's such a hard position to play. Um, so, yeah, we think about it a little bit, but he's very, very crafty and he's, um, he's very, he uses his body really well too. So, yeah, we think about it. Draper's, you know, big, aggressive ruckman. Most teams have them. Um, so, but, I mean, I've sort of gotten past the point where I have my heart in my mouth when Blitzarbs is in the ruck. He's such an important player for us, but he's just got a method that kind of, works pretty well against those bigger guys so um, yeah we think about it but we don't think it's a um, good enough reason not to play him in there at times. How bad is Jack Bowes' calf issue? I don't really know. Um, subbed out pretty quickly so I think if that's that's generally a pretty strong indication that it'll miss a few. Go wrong seem to finish the game with us on the hammy house. How's that? It's yeah, just precautionary from what I'm told so he um, was aware of something throughout the game, but was able to um, keep playing. And yeah, we don't take risks with um, fast twitch guys like Gary and Hamstring, so it's a good sign that he was able to play through. Is that is that Tui? Um, how's, how's he? Like, he's had back spasms, which he's had before. Um, his ability to come up from these things is amazing. Like I think the way he was kind of moving yesterday, most players would have been ruled out, but. He's kind of saying it's only a flesh wound and he'll come to hand, but really he was moving horribly last week, uh, yesterday. Um, marginally better today, but just clearly not good enough. But as I said, he's had these types of things pop up before and they've never cost him, I don't think they've cost him a game, um, but even, even this week, I think it'll only be one. Did he just basically do a fitness test before the game, so you were hoping he might get up before he was hoping? Like yeah. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah, so he did that before the teams went in an hour beforehand and just clearly wasn't good enough. How was it coaching against the brother again for the first time in a while? And did you find it? Oh, I'd forgotten about it until you reminded me. <laughs> yeah, no, coaches don't coach against each other. The team, like, you know, roll out the same trite crap, but yeah, I don't like talking about it. <laughs> is he one playing better than Dane Field in the comp at the moment? Yeah, I mean he's a handful when he when he gets the game um, played his way. Uh, I mean, I, I, Bob, if I don't watch every game every weekend, I'm pretty close. Um, so I, I actually, this is the part of the footy discussion that I do enjoy. I try not to kind of get engaged in in much of it. But even watching the games and you see Bontempelli play, and then the conversation immediately goes to. He must be the best player in the comp. How can someone be better than him? And then you watch Cameron and Dangerfield and you see Dacos as a young player and then Kerno kicks nine and that's that's the fun part of watching the footy, I reckon, those those debates. I'm so biased. Like, 
I've been asked about Dangerfield and Cameron, and I reckon Stewart's better than both of them. So. <laughs> I know you haven't been able to see the VFL just yet today, but Jai Clark looks like he put together his most complete game. How close is he to a debut? Close. Yeah, close. But um, I want to be really careful that, and I think I've made, I've erred in this way previously, so I want to be really careful that I don't talk about him every single week and the pressure just builds on him. He's going to be at our footy club for a long period of time and we'll bring him in when we think it's a, appropriate. Um, but it'll be appropriate after we've been patient with him. So I think I've talked about it longer than I probably should have, but if he doesn't play next week, I'm just not going to answer the question about him because it's just not fair on him. Um, he'll be... He's tracking beautifully. We're really thrilled that we were able to draft him um, to our footy club and we haven't seen anything that um, has dented our confidence in how good a player he's going to be. So, and it's hard. I, I, I mean, I understand it. Uh, there are a lot of early draft picks around the competition who have come in and played straight away and, and played well. Um, so it's easy for those guys to get impatient and the people around them to get impatient, but we've got to resist that temptation. We're looking forward to what the next 15 years looks like for Jai, and we're not going to um, rush him in before we think the time's appropriate.